Well, if you watched the second GOP primary debate last week, you've probably already had your fill of misogyny, but we're going to do this segment anyway. After watching 11 grown educated adults, <laughs> wait, I'm sorry, 10 grown educated adults and Scott Walker, all fumbled to come up with a single famous American woman other than Rosa Parks, I couldn't help but think how much easier this segment was going to be to fill as the election ramps up. And of course, this came on the heels of the how many women I would kill to save a fertilized egg round, which came on the heels of Donald Trump explaining how it can't be sexist if he's saying he would fuck some chick. So I was starting to think we'd already covered the virulent chauvinism portion of the evening, but I guess that doesn't happen until Donald Trump fat shames the singing lady. But I don't think any of those represented the most misogynistic moment in the night. That honor goes to the only woman on the stage, Carly Fiorina, talking about the debunked Planned Parenthood sting videos as if they were directed by Eli Roth. While everybody's talking about how many Planned Parenthood clinics they would personally demolish with their bare hands, Fiorina starts talking about the controversial video that Republicans have clung to, which shows an abortion doctor talking about abortion without being disgusted by her own existence. And make no mistake, that's exactly what the video showed. Despite the three trillionth congressional investigation of Planned Parenthood, the organization was, for the three trillionth time, completely exonerated of any wrongdoing. So they're talking about a video that A, has been completely debunked by a bipartisan committee, B, was clearly edited to make Planned Parenthood look as evil as possible, and C, entirely took place at a restaurant over dinner. But when Fiorina described it, here's the actual wording she used. Quote, a fully formed fetus on the table, its heart still beating, its legs kicking while someone says, we have to keep it alive to harvest its brain, end quote. Again, the actual video being talked about is a video of people eating dinner at a restaurant. This would be like describing the Zapruder film as a dance number. But in her defense, Fiorina had no fucking idea what she was talking about and assumed everyone must have been talking about an anti-abortion propaganda video she saw on Facebook. And again, in her defense, the video she's talking about does in fact show a fetus with its heart beating and its legs kicking. Though the video is of unknown origin and is almost certainly a video of surgery on a premature birth. So it's less like she was just making shit up off the top of her head and more like she started presenting facts from loose change during the terrorism portion of the debate. Of course, I shouldn't let this piss me off too much. After all, the paternalistic bullshit out of the Republican Party has, if anything, made gender equality a more universal issue. I mean, sure, there are plenty of people who may think that abortion bans wage inequality and congressmen who think the mouth is connected to the uterus don't affect their day-to-day -day life. But to them, I simply say, just wait until they shut the entire fucking government down over it. And that's apparently exactly what we have to look forward to. For our listeners overseas and the ones who manage to avoid news cycles altogether, we're recording under the threat of a looming government shutdown, which, if it happens, will once again be the byproduct of Republican extremists threatening to hold their breath until they turn blue. And don't let them bullshit you. The closer we come to the deadline, the more effort the GOP puts into obfuscating this with references to the sequester and highway bills and the like. But if the government shuts down again, it will be because asshole misogynists like Ted Cruz are trying to score brownie points with their evangelical base by defunding Planned Parenthood. Because apparently other people dying of cervical cancer is a small price to pay to lock poor women into poverty. And on that happy note, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.